I didn't actually know how to count bars when I met Jeff. You know, so I would write a verse and it'd be 12 bars, sometimes 14, sometimes 18. <laughs> you know, anything but 16 bars, you know what I mean? And he kind of trained me to write the chorus. And he was like, he'd make me write the chorus to the record three or four times before I started. And this is why sometimes I'll, I'll create, I have habits based on that. And sometimes I'll put more than one melody on that actual record. So, like, for example, in PIMP, I start off and go, it's a PIM, I'm, I'm a PIMP. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you heard about me. And then there's a point on the record where I'm going, I'm about my money, you see, you can holler at me. And I learned to do those different things under Jay's tool. So, you know, he's, he's definitely been influential in my career. In this clip from a radio interview, 50 Cent outlines one of the building blocks that made him into one of hip hop's most prolific writers when it comes to choruses and hooks. As before he could ever expand to the point that he uncovered his own rugged, self-aggrandizing approach that shifted millions of units, a young and hungry Curtis Jackson had to swim in the shallow end and learn the theory of what makes something memorable in music. Step number one, master the basics. Under the tutelage of none other than Run DMC's renowned turntablist and producer Jam Master J, 50, who'd spent his early years dealing that stuff on the streets of Southside Queens while envisioning the hip-hop stardom that he so coveted, learned how to pen something memorable. As he explained in an interview with Vulture, it was his time spent under the learning tree of a man who'd been at the very top of the game that taught him the importance of interspersing your rhymes with hooks that could take a mere barrage of vocals and turn it into something that would have legs. He gave me a cassette tape that had a beat that he made on it and I wrote to it and recorded a piece in his studio. So he was like, yo, that sounds good, but where's the hook? And I was like, that part right there, because there was a repetitive point in the song. I didn't have any song structure. I knew a chorus was supposed to be on a song, so I put that area where it was repetitive, but there wasn't a four bar chorus or an eight bar chorus that would have things that you would remember. So he actually started to teach me how to write music. He gave me writing habits because he would have me write the chorus three times before he picked one. What Jay would say to me is, that's good, but if it is what we think it is, you need another one. A man who was famously released from a record contract while languishing on a hospital bed, even being shot nine times and blacklisted by the industry couldn't douse the flames of his desire. And once he mastered the art of aligning words and melodies to construct invigorating and immediately gripping hooks, there was quite literally nothing that could stop him. Long before he even reached the apex of the game, 50's killer instinct for choruses was well documented. So much so that when the young, then unproven leader of G-Unit came into Baseline Studios, Jay-Z's engineer young guru knew that the hooks were what set him apart. Jay walked in the studio, he said it before, but I'm telling you how impactful it was. He walked in the studio and he was like, yo, this dude 50, y'all gonna have to deal with him in the next couple months. He said it to the whole crew. You had to deal with him. I knew that he was gonna be, because for me, 50 is like one of the most incredible hook writers. Right. And hooks will get you oh, everywhere. Lord. This dude said, I know you don't love me. Mm -hmm. Cause you ain't the same when Jay-Z's around. Well, I said, Rick, that's all. <laughs> that's our hook. How do we not say See that? that? Right. That is a bleak hook. Right. How wow. do we not say that? Right. I'm looking like, yo, yeah. oh, this dude is too good. Yeah. I love Fifth. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and when he did, like, it's just those things. But Jay acknowledged it early. He was like, y'all gonna have to deal with this dude. He's coming. If you yourself would like to learn how to write hit choruses and master song structure like 50 and other goat tier artists, pick up our four hour song structure masterclass, Hit Records Hot Beats, by clicking the first link in the video description. But equipped with the ability to take the gritty narratives of his life or swaggering declarations of dominance and convey them in a way that is immediately recognizable, 50's days under the watchful eye of the late Jam Master Jay proved to be indispensable in leading him to the promised land of hip hop. But rather than just demonstrating the upside of this method with his own catalog, 50 imparted that same wisdom to his comrades in G-Unit. In turn, this enabled his lieutenant and resident punchline king, Lloyd Banks, to learn how to move away from being renowned as a great rapper in order to become an artist with commercial appeal. Coming in to mixtapes, right? Like starting from like Cutmaster C and the Clues and watching 50. To be perfectly honest with you, that was like, and he wasn't just like a writer, he was an exceptional songwriter. So, you yeah, know what I mean? Like sure. just 
which was like a plus for me because you know you looking around the game it wasn't many like that everything from uh what a cheat code right Fuck. so from the intro from the introduction intro what you say in the beginning right mm -hmm. uh where the pause so and that's how i write cheat code mm. and that's what i got from 50 because mm. i was always ball heavy the outros the bridges all of these things i learned from watching him record and they were cheat codes because if i had the illa 16 he was still a show. Mm. I didn't have that mm. yet. While Banks' entire tribute to 50's guidance contains plenty of gems that can be applicable to your own career, his closing remarks in regards to how the chorus would overshadow his most dizzying bars is one that should be taken into account. Unless you want to spend your whole entire career in the underground, there really is no overstating the impact that one chorus can have in comparison to decades worth of impeccable rhymes. This is something that, due to the benefit benefit of Jam Master Jay's experience and his willingness to heed his words, 50 came to learn. And what's more, it brings us directly onto our next point. Step number two, use hooks as an anchor. If I can't find the chorus, I don't know what I'm writing really. It's not a song, like, like you got, look, the best rappers are the guys that battle it. They write really good punchlines. I, I watch them myself and look at the delivery and stuff that they're doing on, on these DVDs when, when they actually rapping it and it's dope. But they can't write a song to save their life. Coming up in a crowded New York marketplace that had elite spitters everywhere you look, this quote from 50 speaks to him realizing what set him apart and where his strengths lie. Seemingly content in the knowledge that producing the most verbose double entendres wouldn't take him to where he wanted to go, 50 fused his rough edge bars with the values of pop music, and by doing so, he not only began to run circles around his competition, but he can make songs that have stood the test of time. As opposed to trying to play others at their game or fall into the trap of believing that to succeed, lyrical adeptness was all that mattered, 50, who is really no slouch with the penmanship either, spent time finding his pocket and learning the coded language of melodies. By doing so, it meant that he knew exactly what he was capable of and the ramifications that it had for the rest of the game once he rose to prominence. Old I'm finna put them niggas out of business. They don't start putting out some real music, this is gonna go out of business. Cause it's just changing. All of that off bubble gum, this music is singing on every record. That just is not going to be effective much longer. Though 50's hard headedness and take no prisoners mentality is an enduring part of how the world perceives him, one quick tip that should be taken on board from him is that even with that degree of authoritativeness, he isn't afraid of feedback on his hooks or verses either. As ultimately, he's aware that the writer might be blinded by affection for their own work, whereas others may be able to see the fruits of their labor through a more objective angle. How do you determine, how do you determine of those, you know, of those 40 records, which are the 34 that don't wind up released and aren't, you know, the bonus iTunes tracks or whatever? Yeah, some, some stay hot to you the same way. Some impress the room instead of just the writer. And I watch, I play the music and look. Not afraid to have to go back to the drawing board if need be or retool things when something isn't hidden quite in the way he imagined, this flexibility in his approach brings us neatly into our next key point in regards to why 50's run through hip hop provides such an effective blueprint for how to be a hit maker. Step number three, be multi-dimensional. Once you start to remove all of those boundaries of what you can write about and what you can't write about, Every track that comes on, you can rap to anything. So really, what is your style? Now you really don't have a style anymore because you can do anything. Over the course of his illustrious run, 50 has proven himself to be anything but a one-trick pony. Across his iconic records like Get Rich or Die Trying and The Massacre, 50 traversed from fiery, enemy-baiting anthems and club hits to tracks which serenade the fair sex. Courtesy of Mr. Jackson, we find a clear-cut case study of why it pays to be versatile, and it's a skill that you should seek to acquire with haste. Let's not forget, 50 was so adept at embodying the mood of any track that he even shared his gift with others, helping artists from the game to Tony Yayo lay down their records. And while this could be seen as a charitable act, in the case of the West Coast Great Hope of the early 2000s, he leveraged his work on this seminal album, the documentary, for opportunities. I recorded the whole second album as a template, right? I had 14 records. I know that there wasn't my best verses, but the choruses were right. And I focused on my song structure, mm -hmm. right? And I went to meet Jimmy, and Jimmy was like, he played me games record. 
Game was in the studio with Dre for over a year mm-hmm. at that point. He said, yo, what you what you think about it? I said, no, he can rap. <laughs> I said, he's a great rapper. He's just not a, a good songwriter yet. He said, if you fix this, if you think you can fix this? I said, I can fix it. He said, if you fix it, I'm sure that everything is good between, you know, you and Dre and everything is mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, that's nothing. That's nothing. I fix it. I, t- I only worked with, with Game for four days. The four days that I worked with Game, I muted my vocals, right? Or documentary special, higher church for thugs, hated to love it. He, when he rocked to him, he, he did it. He nailed the shit. Later down the line, 50's contributions would be seen so vital that even the game himself had to acknowledge that his friend turned nemesis helped put the puzzle together when it came to creating the biggest hits on the project. No matter what the subject matter or voice is thrown at 50, if he can cobble together a chorus or a hook, then you've got a hit on your hands. And even though the industry has changed since his heyday, the principles applied here are ultimately timeless and should be enlisted by anyone hoping to leave a seismic mark on the genre they love. Now, we want to see you in the comments. What do you think is 50's catchiest hook ever? I know there's a lot of choices, but what is 50's catchiest hook ever? And of course, if you're a rapper yourself, be sure to check out the video description for more info. I've been your host, Drew Marcy, the big homie Drew for How to Rap. I'm out.